Okay, students, on to our next neurological problem. This one is not real common, but you do hear about it. I have taken care of a client with this. Um, this could be um, on your ATI, could be on your NCLEX, um, simply because of vaccinations and immunizations. Now, just put that in your memory bank for a minute. The, the disease is called Guillain-Barre. Not Gillian Barr, Gillian Barre. And the location of the problem is the myelin sheath, again, around the neurons in the peripheral nervous system. So I'm going to go down here to this picture here. And the problem, look at this myelin sheath. See right here, this picture, it's all damaged. Okay. Where is that? That's not in the central nervous system, that's in the peripheral nervous system. Okay. And it's real, this is really weird, and it's very, very weird. And it's so weird that I never forgot it when I learned it. And I'm going to teach you about it too. Guillain Barre is believed to be another autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the myelin sheath. It's not multiple sclerosis, though. Okay. The cause is idiopathic, which means we don't know what causes it. But it's known to occur after a viral illness or a vaccination. So whenever they start talking about vaccinations and COVID and the flu, and you might hear on the news um, a chance of Gillian Barre. Most people don't get it. Okay, so don't be not getting your vaccinations. Vaccinations are relevant. They help prevent diseases and things like that. But when they do see Gillian Barre, usually it's two weeks or so after having a vaccination. But don't please don't let that panic you. It starts as paresthesias, numbness or tingling in the feet, and rapidly progresses upwards. So watch what I'm going to do. Let me show you where the problem starts down here and moves up. That's interesting. So one morning you wake up and your your feet are numb and tingly on both sides. And it results in ataxia, which, of course, would be difficulty moving. Uh, because uh, if your legs are numb and tingly, and your toes or whatever, then you're going to have a hard time moving. And it could go on up. Resulting in bowel and bladder problems. So maybe now you can't get your stool out. You can't get your urine out. And it could ascend, go even higher to the upper extremities and the thoracic cavity. Oh, Lord. So what I want you to remember is that the problems start down here and move up. And they don't always go all the way up to your thoracic cavity. I, in fact, I hope they don't. I hope they just stay in your legs. But it could go that high. And if it goes up the numbness and tingling, which is going to result in paralysis. In fact, they call Gillian Barre an ascending paralysis. That's what's so weird about this, is it starts in the feet and moves its way up. And how far it's going to go up, we don't know. But your worst fear is that it paralyzes the muscles of respirations like the diaphragm. If so, the client will not be able to breathe on his own and will need to be on a ventilator. Okay, I think it's weird. Now, look at him. If he was numb and tingly here, you can clearly see he's unsafe on his feet. He is a false risk if there ever was one. But right now, it looks like he's probably breathing okay, but you never know when it's going to go up this far. So I'll go here and say, I hope it doesn't go that far up. I hope not. Okay, ascending paralysis, Gillian Beret. There's no cure for it. I mean, it'll go away, though. But anyway, I'll explain that. So Gillian Beret has three phases to this. So uh, there is some good news here. The initial phase is when you start to have signs and symptoms in the feet. And that's going to continue for one to three weeks as it moves up the body. So he started down here and it moved up. Okay. 
And in one to three weeks, we'll see it eventually stop. Where it's going to stop, we don't know, but I hope it doesn't get to his lungs. Now, right now, he's breathing on his own. So right now, this is probably good. But if you, his lungs, he does have some supplemental oxygen on, okay? But what is the nurse doing here and why? Well, she's using the incense barometer. And remember, to do that, you inhale. And when you inhale, you're taking big, deep breaths. And I want you to do that. 10 to 20 times every hour to prevent pneumonia. Now, you know he can't be up walking, so he's going to be on bed rest, and he's going to have all the complications of immobility. And that's not here, but I don't have, we don't need to beat a dead horse, but I'll go ahead and tell you, any nurse should know that if you're on bed rest because your feet and legs and thighs are numb and tingly or paralyzed, then you can't walk. So, uh, then you can have skin breakdown, constipation is very real, uh, because you can't get up and walk, you're at risk for atelectasis and pneumonia, you're at risk for blood clots in the legs, okay, so hopefully you understand all that. Now, in about one to three weeks, it'll start going up, and then you're going to plateau, which means you're going to stay the same, and no further changes occur, <coughs> and he stays at this level for weeks to months. So he's going to be staying at this level. Could be weeks, could be months. But the good news here, and I'll put a smiley face here, is that gradual improvement will come. And it could take as long as two years. Now, what is so weird here is, watch this. The recovery phase. You know he's getting better when the numbness and tingling or paralysis goes away in the reverse order that it appeared, meaning the paralysis and paresthesias disappear from the upper body and progress down to the lower body. So let me erase all of this. When it started, it went up. When it goes away, it starts and goes down. Okay, so it's going to reverse itself. Um, and this means that he'll be able to breathe and move his arms before he can move the legs or walk. But he will get better. The interdisciplinary other departments that'll be helping this guy, of course, would be a speech. Hold on a minute. PT, OT, speech, speech respiratory therapy will be involved in the client's care, okay? All right, next slide. You can get the hiccups. So let's take a look at this lady. She does have a smile on her face, but she's got Gillian Barre and her kids are in there. Um, but let's see, I bet she's, oh, I think hers went way up. And remember, it started down here and went up. And hers went all the way up to the thoracic cavity too. And I know that because she's been, she's on the ventilator and she's, she's on the vent and that's breathing for her. She, I can tell this by looking at her arms that she can't move those arms. She can't move the legs. I will hope you do some passive range of motion. Hopefully you know what that means that you put her arms and legs through their range of motions, then she can't do it because we don't want her to get contracted. And you would do that several times a day. Speech therapy and occupational therapy may help you with that. She also has a feeding tube um, because I don't know if she can, she can't feed herself. Now you could feed herself, feed her, but maybe she can't swallow very well. Um, you're going to have to turn her, reposition her uh, so she doesn't get skin breakdown. I'm wondering uh, if we have a catheter in her house, she's going to get her urine out. Do we have to digitally disimpact her to get the, the stool out? Um, let's see. What else do I want to say there? Uh, uh, anyway, you, excuse me, will know she's getting better when suddenly maybe she can swallow better. Maybe she can breathe better. 
Maybe then she gets off the ventilator. Then maybe she can move her arms. Then maybe eventually in a couple of years, she can move her legs. Okay. All right. So that's Gillian Barre. Very, very weird. Ascending paralysis. A couple of weeks after a vaccination or a viral illness. Don't panic. Most people don't get it. Okay. And it's going to reverse itself in the reverse order. So Gillian Barre, where is the problem? Well, the problem lies in the myelin sheath being attacked by the immune system. And where? In the peripheral nervous system. And what do we see? The paralysis ascends. Okay. I hope to God it doesn't go up this high. But in that case with that lady, it did. Um, it will reverse itself from upper to lower. What cues represent a priority? Well, I would say if I had a client with Gillian Barre and the paralysis started moving up and his pulse ox started dropping, indicating that he can't take deep breaths and oxygenate, um, that would be a priority that the lungs were involved. Another priority is that the swallowing is involved in potential aspiration. Another priority is they got a skin breakdown and uh, that got infected. Another priority for me would be he's impacted with stool and he, he hasn't had a bowel movement. No one's got it out. And then he starts vomiting feces uh, or I can smell feces on his breath. That's that's a that's a priority. So you just got to stop and think what you know, what would grab me? as being urgent here, okay? So um, that concludes um, Gillian Bray.